If you run, you're a runner. Let's start there. It's that simple. Pace doesn't matter, time doesn't matter. You're a runner if you go out and put one foot in front of the other with the purpose of improving yourself. But you also have to accept that you're not a before picture. That's not being kind to yourself or the body you're in. But so many of us have difficult relationships with our own bodies. So here's what we're gonna do together in this video. We're gonna go through the things that might happen to you and your body when you start running, or even if you've been running for a while. We're gonna to talk to people who have been there, been where you might be at right now, and hear how they smashed their barriers down. And we're gonna discuss physical and mental tips to help you identify as and be the best runner you can be, regardless of weight, shape, age, or background. We'll allay some fears and magnify your strengths and turn you into a goddamn rock star runner. And you might be thinking, what could this skinny little rat boy say that is gonna help or be relevant to me in any way? Well, first of all, lest we forget 2007 to 2009, which Mary and I affectionately refer to as the mayonnaise years, where I had no concept of how much fat was in the mayonnaise that I was squirting over every meal. But on a more serious note, none of us truly know the journeys that each of us have been on, and I would just urge us all to be kind to each other. We don't know the struggles that we've faced and ultimately this channel is about being kind, helping everyone and giving back. So I'm hoping I'm gonna be able to help today and it starts with me going out for a run. And we're gonna talk about the things that happen to your body in terms of size and shape and strength when you begin your running journey or indeed later down the line. First thing to expect with your body and body shape when you start training, and this is something that I've had fed back to me time and time again, is that when you start running, you won't necessarily lose the weight that you think you will, but it's for a very simple reason. It's because when you start training regularly, you start losing adipose tissue, which is fat, but you also start gaining muscle tissue, which is much denser than adipose and therefore heavier. In fact, almost twice as heavy as adipose tissue. So as you're losing the fat, you're gaining the muscle. So it feels like you're not losing weight, but actually you're switching tissue you don't want for tissue that you do want. And if you're just starting running and you do pick up an injury, just remember that's perfectly natural and normal. And don't let that stop you. Don't let it put you off or make you think that it wasn't meant to be. Because it is a strain on the body. When you're starting something new, you're doing a new kind of exercise, it's a strain on the muscles and the joints, and you're likely to feel niggles and potentially pick up an injury. That's really, really normal. So don't let it stop you. Remember that you are a runner now, so be kind to yourself, look after yourself, and get back to it as soon as you can. Growing pains. <laughs> and you might be wondering how hard you need to train uh, when you're starting your journey, and it's quite a simple answer. It's that you take it really, really slowly. And the reason for that is that you've got muscles and joints and everything that won't be used to running yet. And if you go too hard too early, all you're gonna do is put them under too much pressure and they're gonna break down and give you injuries or at least pain. So that point is applicable across the board. It doesn't matter if one of the byproducts of your training is to lose weight or not. That's for everybody there. Because remember, you're in it for life. That's the point of this running journey. And just remember, the more weight that you have in the early days, the more force that is going through your feet on every down step. And that means that you're putting excess pressure if you're going too fast. So there's absolutely no problem with starting easy because you're in it for the long term. Okay. And the last thing that you might find happening when you start your running journey is that you might not lose as much weight as you thought after the initial switch of adipose to uh, muscle tissue. And it could be that you need to look at your diet. And I'm not gonna go into too much detail, I'm not a dietitian, I'm not a nutritionist, but you cannot outrun a bad diet. You wouldn't wanna put sunflower oil in your car engine, and you have to treat yourself like that as well. Now that you are training, now that you're a runner, you wanna look at what is going in to fuel the systems. Yeah, and also your weight might go up at times as well, like especially if you increase your running distance, you get super hungry and increase what you're eating. So you will find that there's times when you feel a little bit heavier and a little bit lighter, and that's perfectly normal. Part of the process and lighter and thinner doesn't always mean a faster, stronger runner. Right, I need to go and finish my run. You're going that way, I'm going that way. 
And as I finished the run, I got thinking about role models. And I don't want you to hear all of this information just from me. How about an inspiration of mine? An athlete I've been coaching for 18 months and I've been blown away by his attitude and his progress. But I'll let him introduce himself. Greetings, everybody. My name is Yanni, 37, from Dumbara, Finland. I'm uh, roughly 190 centimeters and around 150 kilos or so. Uh, ben can put a conversion chart somewhere here for those of you who don't speak metric. So I've always been a big guy, not in the bodybuilder type of sense, but you know, as a run of the mill obese guy. And I first got into this whole sports thing back in Christmas 2016 when a friend of mine signed up for a half marathon. And I was like, well, if he can, then surely so can I. So I downloaded an app, put on my old crusty sneakers and trained for five or six months. And I was able to finish it in two hours and 43 minutes. Ever since that, I've been doing all sorts of challenges once a year like uh, obstacle 10k obstacle course called tough viking 300k bike ride with my camping gear so last year i finished a olympic distance triathlon uh, i was three hours and 30 minutes this year i already ran a half marathon not as a race but as part of my training for my 33k trail run i have this autumn when i finished that 21k run zone two i think it was spot on three hours or whatever i cried like i ran a half marathon just because i could and i remember back in 2016 uh, it was winter time so it was pitch black all day every day i did my first two weeks of training like hoping that nobody sees me you know briskly walking drenched in sweat slow as a snail but then after i ran my first full kilometer i realized i don't care like it's not for them it's not because of them it's for me i'm challenging myself others other people's opinions who cares they all have opinions let them have it i'm doing this for me and nowadays I'm doing it for my son. I'm doing it as an example for lots of people, for you guys, like, get out there, do it. Nobody really cares, except you. You're your biggest enemy. And once you defeat that, the world is your oyster. All other cliches as well. So go for it. Physical tips done. We've spoken to Yarni and now we're gonna speak about something that's very close to our heart. And it's the kind of psychological approach, the mental approaches to running, whether you've just started or whether you've been in it for a long time. We think that we can help you with some of these tips that might just change the way that you look at it all and keep you in it for life. And the first tip is something I talk about all of the time on the channel and it, you have to switch your mindset to become process focused over outcome. Process is just training or being a better person you know that act of getting up every day and trying to improve yourself the journey of it the journey Not that's the, the process yeah all right you sum it up better than i do <laughs> but the outcome is the destination it with running there should be no destination long term it's just a process of being better but if you attach to something like weight loss or if you attach to something like getting a medal or running a pace or running a time these things end yeah and what happens when they end they're lovely byproducts, don't get me wrong. We focus on the process, but we have weight loss or we have running a particular time. These are the byproducts of doing what we love. So, how did you sum it up, Mary? Journey over journey, destination. Journey, not the destination. The second tip in this section is to celebrate what your body can do, not what it looks like. For many people, our bodies change as we grow older. People, if they've had children or not had children you know you can feel frustrated that your body doesn't look a certain way but actually focus on what it can do i was frustrated with my body for years for not being able to have children and then i realized through running that it can actually do amazing things i've run marathons ultra marathons really challenging stuff and i think actually my body is amazing and it's running that's taught me that so use running to celebrate your body and the amazing things that it can do. And remember this saying, the grass is always greener on the other side is the saying we don't want. The grass is greener where you water it. So focus on the things that you can control. Love what your body does. Don't worry about what it looks like. Instrument, not ornament. Point three is see your body as your body. 
don't compare it to anybody else's. Comparison is the thief of joy, we start there. There's too many people out on social media, personal trainers or athletes that have the bodies that you think, I really want that, but really want your body. That's the key here, is just being kind to yourself and chipping away at your own body day after day by just going through the process of training and wanting to be better. Yeah, I really want one leg. <laughs> but you're not gonna have them, be But happy. I'm not, so I'm happy with my short, powerful, strong, awesome legs. Yes. Yeah, you do you. You look after yourself and focus on yourself. And finally, Please don't be afraid to see yourself as an inspiration. We need to be kinder to ourselves in general and, and see that by the process of you going out running, you are almost certainly inspiring someone else to do the same. That's the way that it works. You might not know it yet, but I bet you anything that you will be inspiring someone else to do it. You gotta be kinder to yourself. That's what it is. Like, look at the analogy of the oxygen masks in a plane. You can't look after anybody else in your circle or around you if you've not got the os oxygen, oxygen, if you've not got the oxygen mask on you first. And it's the same with being kind. You can be a lot kinder to others once you're kinder to yourself. Yeah, and if you're getting out there, running, doing it, you are inspiring people. 100%. No doubt in my mind, every runner will have inspired someone else to run. You know, a candle doesn't lose any of its flame by lighting another candle, Mary. Did you know that? I do know that. It's a lovely saying. Now here's what we want you to do. If you're watching this and you have been through this journey and you're, you're not on the other side but you're deeper into the process, I want you to write in the comments what you did, how you achieved it, what you see your successes are to help everybody else. Or write your own comments about how you're going to help yourself in your running journey from what you've learned in this video. And if you like the video, no hard sell from us but consider subscribing. You might like this video which is the nine hard truths of being a runner. Giveaway number nine, you'll probably poo yourself if you stay in it long enough. And Speaking of being proud of my body, check out this video of the last race I did, which was unbelievably difficult. Gruesome. See you Sunday. Bye. Bye.